You're with Pastor Troy right here. We're getting excited. We got a special program for you. You're going to be seeing over the next few weeks until we get ready for season two. You're going to be seeing the best of the On the Dock season one. These will be coming at you hard and steady. I want you to get them out there. Check them out. Help us get them out to your friends. We want to see you on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes as well. But this is the best of, get this, the best of season one. Get ready for it. We're going to be coming at you with a super season two coming up this August. We'll see you soon. Enjoy this episode of On the Dock season one. Best of. on the dock with pastor troy we're in the saddle again here we have got a bonus episode a bonus episode we've got a great crowd for you today we're going to introduce these guys in just a minute but i'm pastor troy benetone the host your lovely host i don't know about lovely but we're on the dock here but we have got in the room we've got our executive director lucas winkler he's our techno wizard and behind the controls for the first time he's got his assistant technical guy colt so if you see a glitch He's a rookie in the seat, but you know what? We've got this part so good, and God's going to anoint him. This is, a, this is the transfer of anointing here. You see, it? just like NGL, guys, get, for, for Colt, for you guys listening, but what happens with No Greater Love is the leaders lead the first couple days, and when you get to the last day, you take your assistant leader, who's been your assistant the whole time, your armor bearer, and then you look at your assistant yeah. leader and say, you're now in charge, and the leader moves to the assistant role and simply becomes a sideline coach, and then the assistant steps up and leads. So today, Colt's been through three yeah. episodes. It's now time for him to be the leader. And now Lucas takes a step back and gets to be Papa for a minute. All right. <laughs> we'll see how we do. It's going to be a great episode. We're all about here conversations <clears throat> to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. And that's exactly what you're seeing with these guys here. That's what we're going to see here today. It's going to be amazing. We've had an amazing three episodes. Go back and check them out. But how do you find them? You find us on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. Those are our primary platforms. And uh, you can go to also Google Podcast, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and Sermonet. If you're on Roku, you got to download the Sermonet app and then find the On the Dock with Pastor Troy channel. We've also got social media partners Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and Twitter. I don't even know how to tweet, but you can tweet <laughs> us if you want. Donna would love to speak to you. She's our executive producer, Donna Manzos. Put out commentary, share things, likes, whatever you want to do. Hey, look, when you find our platforms, make sure you subscribe to them. And then hit notification. It'll tell you every time we put up a new podcast. We put up podcasts every Tuesday and Thursday. So you're going to want to get the newest podcast and make sure you don't miss one. So subscribe, notify, hit comments, like, share, and please tell other people. You, you guys, when we get these out, go tell other people because, I mean, it's good stuff. And then we always want to have you be one of our my Patreon partners on the dock has a Patreon channel. Go to Patreon, download the app and you can become a partner or a sponsor. Check out all the things that are available to you. Check that out and, and be a part of the on the dock team. We'd love to have you at a new level with us. And finally, you can get all this information on the dock.org. Go to on the dock.org. We have an embedded player. You can watch it right there. You can see all the links to all of the platforms. All of our social media sites are there as well as how to get to, uh, to get to pa uh, Patreon as well. And you can always email us if you have any questions at info at on the dock.org. RG. All right, we're ready to go. We are in this studio. We're on the dock. We're in Studio A. <laughs> studio A is the big cottonwood tree. Well, you guys, like, how about this cottonwood table? Isn't this great? Isn't this awesome? It. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. It just feels like you, you're almost out, out one of the blinds out there on, on one of the trees. <laughs> we didn't knock this thing down. It fell. And then the guy took it apart. And this is out of the heart of it. Wow. And just a beautiful table. 50 inches up here, a little narrow down there. And by the way, Jim, this, this coffee table is off that end. Yep. And for our other set, set B, uh, that's the coffee table comes off this. So we wow. just, you know, we're on the dock. We want some cottonwood. Cottonwood grows right on the water there. You know, we like that. Yeah. So <laughs> we're in studio here. To my right, I've got John Merle. John Merle's a good old guy. He loves the Lord. <laughs> NGL veteran, NGL legend. He's been around the horn, actually getting ready to do getting ready to plot a new trip to Mexico. I thought you retired, John. You're, yeah. you're getting back in the game, going to a new spot. What's Amen. up with that? It's wherever God's opened the door. I'm you know what happens it. when you retire. Your time becomes available for the Lord to use Amen. at new That's levels. Right. You know, yeah. 
Amen. And then across the table from him is Jerry Johnson. Jerry, praise God for you, man. You're doing great things. Yeah. I'm Amen. Excited. Thanks for you. And then, of course, across from me is our brother Jim Murphy, in fresh from Montana. In fresh. He was in Montana this this morning. Yeah. How did, how, how did it look in Montana today? Well, it's beautiful. <laughs> is Jesus Lord in Montana? Oh. You think God's up there mowing the yards and in mountains? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, you got to come back to Illinois. Oh my goodness! Yeah, but look how pretty that corn is. That corn mm-hmm. looks good. It's, it's coming on up. It may tassel. Is guys, it tassel in uh, y'all's? You guys missed the, probably missed the rainbow when I was on my way over here. Oh no, you probably brought the rainbow. So guys, <laughs> yeah, we're in No Greater Love Legends series mm-hmm. roundtable discussion part two in our four-part series on NGL Legends. These guys are in here. We had Dave Morani with us in part one and part two, so please go back and listen to part one, two, and three, and we're going to wrap up with some great discussion, a little bit of free throw stuff here. Just kind of just kind of throw it out and see what goes on in this episode <clears throat> and uh, hopefully make it easy on Colt over there as he steps in. Man, Lucas left the room. Lucas left the room on him, so we're, we're, at, we're at the mercy of Colt over there. Colt, good job, man. Hey, he didn't tell you this, but we do episodes where we mic him up and put a camera on him while he's doing that, so we won't do you that on this episode. <laughs> Thanks, Colt, for manning the guns over there. All right, praise God. Next generation, getting ready to go. Amen. 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 This stuff all makes sense to them. They see all those buttons. There's more stuff over there you can shake a stick at, Jerry. Yeah. I can't turn none of that on. I can use this mic here, and I can I can do PowerPoints. They're trying to get me to use a fancier program. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, uh, this is working for me. Just leave, 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 leave it alone. This, this, is, this yeah. is working. Guys, I want to throw up. Just, let me just get a starter question out there. I want to put a couple scriptures up. Let me throw this up first. Fred Bishop. Fred has been a mentor and a coach to all of us. That's Fred teaching basic stuff at an NGL training event probably hosted hosted here because we host that here but uh fred does this and gets the men ready every year and you can just tell when he's training going through the basics and uh, we've all heard him a, a dozen hundred times and we're gonna in a, in a little bit we're gonna come down and we're gonna see if we can give you a couple three if you're listening today we're gonna try to give you some takeaways because on the docs about getting you out of the shallows into the deep if you are listening and you're wanting to figure out how to improve your leadership quotient at being a stronger leader for christ we're gonna give you some things we've learned that have been valuable to us and if you want to pick those up and use those and and see if you can get off the dock and out in the deep. We want to really challenge you to do that. And if you don't know how to do that, just just get with us and we'll get you out on one of these trips with us. And we'll, we'll, we'll take you. We'll take you to Liberia. We'll take you to Asia. We'll take you. John will take you to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you out. Jim, they can go out on one of the trips today and go back to New Orleans next year yeah. and, and earn some stripes. You, you can't. That was one of the things I wanted to write down for that last one. Is everybody wants to just run out and have instant ministry? <laughs> you know, yeah. I want to have. They want. And we'll, we'll get that. We'll get that in a minute. But people want to have this instant ministry, but. You have to you have to pay your your dues, and you have to do a little stripes, get a little stripe action. <laughs> a lot of us today want to say, I, 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 "God called me this ministry, and I'm going to go out and have this great ministry right now <laughs> and do all this stuff." And I have news for you: uh, Joseph took 20 years to get to what the Lord showed him in a vision and a dream, and it may be <laughs> years before you see that. <laughs> and you need to pay your dues, and it's in paying your dues that you get the tools you need to sustain that ministry. Because if you didn't pay your dues, if God gave you the ministry, it would crush you. I mean, there, there are places I've been that when I stepped to the next level that have almost crushed me. Mm-hmm. And had I not been through the trenches with you guys in so many other places, I wouldn't have been equipped to survive that load. Yeah. And then what's funny is the Lord's never happy with that load. He always gives me something else for the next trip. And I think, I got this. And then I go, oh, no. <laughs> this is a heavier. They put more plates on it. Mm. you know. And you know, years ago, we talked about the fact that we've all, all of us have made the commitments to go on those trips. We do everything we can to get on them. I decided years ago that if I sick, whatever, I'm getting on the bus. I decided if I get on the bus, the, the Lord, the Lord will, the, the Lord will be with me. And number two, the devil will know my lunchbox Amen. is not for sale. Yes, right. My lunchbox, he's not going to eat in. So I get on the bus and it worked for me. I, I just got on at work. Then when you have to be a leader and you take other people, you got to tell people, you know, just get on the bus. Trust me. It doesn't always work. Sometimes they abandon you, but you go. Yeah. And so you just go and you just learn that, that you got to go. If God calls you, you mm. answer the bell and go and know if you answer the bell and you go, he will meet you there mm-hmm. in the middle of the deep. Hmm. That's amazing. Our God's good at that. So, yeah. so, so Fred teaches us, like, I want to throw from his teaching. Uh, we have all heard this text. When you see this text here, a man's gift, Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Where have you heard this used with you before with Fred Bishop? Probably every time he never spoke. (laughs) Almost every time. Anybody here personally or individually, he's coming, put his hand on your shoulder and says, Troy, got something for you. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I can share with that. Uh, I said that's one of the most valuable things I've learned from Fred. Yeah. Is uh, when you find somebody's gift and his gift makes room for him, you can either step aside and he, or he can put him in a place that that gift's going to work. You'll recognize that. And, uh, and you know, and it's, it's real neat because we, we it always, NGO men is always putting men ahead of them. Right. Hmm. They're always looking for that man's okay. gift. And if you step back, you put him in, and you know what I'm saying, let him work in that. And, uh, man, I, I think that's so special because if the whole church ever worked that way, it'd be unbelievable. It would be. I, I was with Fred for about three years. I'd gone about every trip you could go on, including the conventions. And, and Fred walked up to me and said, you know, brother, he says, I know you're young in the Lord in this, but the Lord wants me to put you on the advisory board. And I said, what is that? And, and why would I want to do that? And, and why me? And I was 24, 25. And he says, because the Lord told me that you have a gift that we need in the mix. And I said, well, what is it? He says, I don't know. The Lord just told me you have a mm-hmm. gift. So I'll put you on the board and we'll see. And we'll see, <clears throat> you know. And then I have seen where my gifts have fit in amongst. And I've also seen where the other men fit into what I need. And it's just been a pleasure to see how God can use you. And I found if you're the only one doing it, as Fred says, mm-hmm. if you're the only one, you're what? You're the best there. You're the best there is. If you're the only one doing it, you're the very best. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I've used that so many times. And I just trust the Lord. And he has brought me through. Let me give you another one. I know we all, we have that NGL in our hat. But most people don't know where the NGL comes from. It comes from John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, than to lay, yes. that, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. When you think NGL, what, that hat you got, Jim, you came in with one wearing one. Did it come just here or did you have it in Montana? Uh, yeah, I had it with me. You had it in Montana? <laughs> oh, yeah. So what does that mean? How does that, what, what does this say to you, the NGL, that concept? What does that mean to you? That means everything to me. Uh, there's no end to that. Uh, uh, there's always find somebody that's got a need. And so... I guess some of the toughest things I've, that I've been in is when men's gone through divorces. Mm-hmm. And I've never mm-hmm. helped, been able to help put a divorce back together, but I've been able to keep a man alive until he can walk again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's a real challenge. So you guys, mm-hmm. when you see that No Greater Love text and you think of NGL, what, what comes to your mind? Vukare. Vukare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I thought that Fred was mad at me when he first put me there. <laughs> <laughs> Vucre, for those of you who don't know, Vucre is in down the quarter of the French Quarter, yeah. deep in the French Quarter. It's a mission that's down there, been serving day in and day out there all the time. <clears throat> and we put we put guys down there for years. We put guys down there that maybe weren't as mobile, maybe they couldn't get yeah. around, maybe a little more difficult. But it's actually transitioned over the years to become kind of an outpost, yeah. not outpost, an inpost, kind of stuck in the demilitarized zone. And go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, well, it, I mean, to me, it was like the island of misfit toys when I first got there. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Fred told me, he said, I wanted you to be in a camp, you know, of, of cats. He said, you know, the difference between cats and dogs? I said, no. He said, well, dogs, dogs think they're, they're human. Cats think they're God. <laughs> <laughs> that really is a really good and, statement. Uh, there was, there was a lot of, uh, Strong-willed brothers there. Well, you know, that, that gets you prepared to hurt lots of people. If you can yeah. get those cats going <laughs> in the right direction, you get that. Yeah. John, any thoughts on you on that? Um, on the John 15, 13 text? Oh. Well, let me say this. Uh, one day I ran into a guy who had an NGL hat on. And, you know, when you see a guy you don't know the NGL hat, your, I mean, your heart jumps. At least, you know, hey. So I went over there. I said, hey, man, that's an NGL hat. And I said, you know, Andrew, he said, man, I'll put this at a yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> really? really disappointed there. Burn me out. Yeah, we, 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 we shouldn't sell them in yard sales. <laughs> no, you know, you have, I think you have to, or I'm a no on that. Bingo, no. Yeah. My, my wife's digging through our stuff. We're thinning out stuff. Yeah. And, and I've got... 50 in jail hats in different places. I got yeah. my hat yeah. rack and I got mm-hmm. a few on that. Yeah. But I got a behind the door rack. Yeah. I got it on the shelf. And she says, you need to throw some of these out. I said, I ain't throwing any of those out. Yeah. No. I said, even if I, I might mow the lawn in them or go hunting in them or do a paint job in them, mm-hmm. but all those got some life in them. As long as they'll still mm-hmm. snap and fit around my head, I've even got some of the old neon ones still around. Those it's are like, it's like the jacket. It doesn't fit me anymore, but it ain't going. <laughs> yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. One more text guys. Here you go. Uh, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. In short, putting the gospel in the hands of faithful men. When you see that, what do you think? Well, that's our scripture. Uh, and um, But what I think about it uh, in my life and my family is, I mean, we're talking about all the stories and the war stories and things, but what is done for my, my, my family. Yeah. What the Lord's used NGL for my family. 
And you know, it made, man, was I bet that bet of a guy? But you know, yeah. my wife has shared at church, you know, about NGL and uh, um, yeah, we're out witnessing, we're out doing this and that and that. But yet, we're back at camp and we're talking to each other and we're we're giving out our stuff and and we want to come back a better man, better husband, better better servant. And uh, that's what NGL's done for me. Amen. Amen. Put the gospel in the hands of faithful men. That, that's the vision that God gave Fred. Mm-hmm. And he's really done that. And you can see when he's teaching, he's, he's executing that. And when he's carrying that cross, I, I, I showed this in the previous episode. Let me see if I can pull it up. I, you, you can see this is at the end of a trip when Fred's carrying the cross, you know, yeah. he's getting to see, he's seen all these mm. hundreds of men come together and be, now they've been in Impacted by the leadership matrix of NGL, they've gone out and they've gotten out of the shallows and they're in the deep. And now he's carrying the cross on the last day. You can just kind of see yeah. that the, just the pleasure of knowing that that mission for that moment's been fulfilled for that hour. And you know, as soon as he gets back in the car, we get back. We're going to dial it up and get ready for the next adventure because putting the gospel in the hands of faithful men is not a one generational thing. No. It's an ongoing process. So that's going to lead to my. I'm going to do this as my opening question, as it wasn't my opening, but I, I think I want to go there. Is you know, how are we doing? Fred's done a phenomenal job putting the gospel in the hands of us. He's done a great job with us. And m- my question is, how are we doing with putting the gospel? How are we doing, us individually? How are we doing at putting the gospel in the hands of the next generation? And, and, and using those principles, plus principles we've learned along the way. I mean, I haven't found anything that's not new that I hadn't learned already. I may, re- I may have come up with a fancy way to say it or package it. But how are we doing at mentoring the next generation? Because... Are we going to be Elisha's who 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 take the portion we got and make sure the next generation gets a double portion? Are we going to be like Jeroboam in the Bible and just be disaster and, and just take it all for ourselves and say, well, my leg's thicker than the leg on that one, and I'm going to be, you know, are we going to just hoard this to ourselves and, and let it lay on the ground and never leave the dock again and let it become just a museum of the past. You know, so I guess my question is, what are we going to do? What, how are we doing at getting this into that next generation, guys? I, I'll take it in any order, whoever's ready to go first. Too. Well, you know, that's that's a big question. But like one night, me and Bobby Williams was walking down to New Orleans, through New Orleans at night and up up Jackson Square and seeing the youth of America. Mm-hmm. Praise and worship. All them crosses on the top. Mm-hmm. I said, Bob, I said, there's our replacements. I said, we died tonight. I said, look how many God sent in to replace us. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, uh, this uh, faithful man, uh, I, I, I guess our, our main goal is that we have someday God will say, well done. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> so we're to, we're to you know, always trying to transplant that on and bring more and more. Uh, and I see it through the generations, like on on, uh, uh, on TV, uh, uh, the young, the youth of, of this of America. I always tell people in the streets, I say, if you don't know what your generation is doing for God, I said, you need you need to tune in because you need to catch up with them because mm-hmm. that transfer that trans is transferring over through all different ministries. I think there's some very solid kids coming up. The, this real young generation, they are, they, they, the generation that's maybe in their twenties and thirties yeah. has had everything. And they're, they're a little soft right now, but there's some 16, 17, 18, 19. Years, I'm starting to see some risk takers again. Hmm. Oh, yeah. They're not satisfied oh, yeah. with what's on the phone and what's at the thing. They're wanting to get back out. You're seeing a, a, reju- a rejuvenation mm-hmm. of craft businesses, mm-hmm. you know, people doing real <clears throat> stuff again, local local pride coming back at the same time. You also see the church right now, to be honest with you guys, you see the church almost locally at it, at some of its weakest point mm-hmm. right now. Right. right. Yeah. COVID was a devastating blow to many churches because their pastors saw it as a, I'm going to, I'm a pastor here. So I, I'll just tell them us. A lot of my colleagues saw the first week as a bonus vacation week. The second and third week was a couple nice extra bonus weeks. And by the end of the first month, several of the churches, which don't even exist anymore in our region, and they haven't even come back, probably never will, they began to see it as a free sabbatical. We got three months. I'm enjoying this. They didn't really do anything. My, 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 my grandfather's church, he's 100 years old uh, in November. They never reached out to him or called him. I've been taking care of him for a year and a half now. They've never brought him a tape. They've never offered him anything, communion. You know, mm. that church has been around forever. But, I mean, nothing. I mean, nothing 
and there's churches that are just gone. They've been sold. They're now boys club in Marion. We got one's a boys club now. Mm-hmm. The churches just disappear because pastors saw it as a just like a free place in a bingo card. And rather than as an opportunity, I mean, I'm I'm exhausted. Shane and I talked about in an episode on pastoring in 2020 and beyond. We, pastors that have effective churches are exhausted because we went into overdrive. To me, this is a like walking into Mardi Gras or walking into Indianapolis 500. You know, I saw a, a devil and a challenge to defeat him and also lift up the standard of Christ. And so we we started an incredible video ministry. We came out of guns and did things. What's funny is our, today, right now, we're doing all kinds of video stuff and we're kind of going back to normal. But now Thailand shut down and our pastors that we influence, the community faith churches there, they're doing their own Zoom churches and their own videos because they saw us doing it. So I am seeing some things take off. I'm seeing 26 pastors in Africa. I mean, in Liberia, I mean, Thailand, Thailand that we trained on Fred's principles that are now planning small groups. I've seen tons of pastors in Africa do that. So I do think we have a challenge. Are we going to be able to get some of this stuff into the DNA of the next generation and not just redeem the church, but make sure that there's being disciples made, faithful yeah. followers of Christ in the next generation? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, I, I watched Hillsong and I watched that generation there. Mm-hmm. And to me, they're amazing. And, and Good worshipers. Their, their worship is, has no uh, certain stop. It just goes to this level, to this level, to that level. And I sit there a lot of times in tears, I'm thinking how exciting it is, man, to, to see a group that powerful. And they're worldwide. They're, cha- they're helping mm-hmm. change the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. I Other- see difficulty. I see yeah. difficulty with, with men right now. They're, they're struggling. Uh, I'll be careful with my words. Uh, Clerical masturbators. Yeah. If that makes sense to you, they're caught up in jobs that they, they don't want, that they, they have no direction, they have no purpose, because a lot of church has not taught men what we've learned from No Greater right. Love. Uh, and that these men are, are, are stuck and they, they don't know the truth. Now, how are we doing as a church? I mean, I guess I, I see it a little differently. Uh, I did, you know, I'm not doing the greatest. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I work with what what young men I get at mm-hmm. work. I uh, just had one two years ago that was a difficult decision for him to go with the pastor from uh, Carpendale, the Vine, and he he moved down to Texas. And I mean, I counseled him for a long time, and I told him, if God's telling you to go, Josh, go. Mm-hmm. And he's doing great down there. Praise mm-hmm. God. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's hit and miss, you know. It, uh, with COVID, it seemed like <laughs> a lot of people came in my office. I remember I, w- I was having difficulty early on, and uh, Jeff Parker called me, mm-hmm. and he was. He, and I said, he said, "Well, how's it going?" I said, "Jeff, people just, I, how do you deal with this?" I said, "I've got so many people coming in. All I can do is share Jesus with them." Mm-hmm. And you know what Jeff Park said to me? Is that all you can do, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It slapped me upside yeah. the head. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, but uh, sure I call him. I, we've got a challenge to figure out how to take the <clears throat> gifts we've got and get it into the next hands to spend some time. We, I mean, John, you're in your retirement time now. And here you're talking about taking a trip to Mexico. You've got a chance as a trip plans to think about how to take your NGL DNA right. and take it to a new place, a new location. You're going to have to break it down and then you're going to have a, a new group to get prepared. Yeah, right. That's right. exciting. Um, when we were talking, when you asked the question, I was, you know, I, and I don't know what what God's got in store timeline, but I'm wondering, you know, are, is, is God prepared us to be some Joshuas that we're going to stand firm, you know, when, I mean, it's getting more and more in your face type of, you know, you know, I've always, my motto is, you know, I want to live my life that once they start gathering Christians, I want to know that my name's on the list, you know, yeah, I don't right. want to, I want to live bold now. And so, uh, that's where I'm at. As far as as far as the other part, generationally, you know, even I'm kind of like what you were saying with the, the church. Uh, so to me, some you know the church is like twiddling her thumbs, right? You know, there's well, some opportunity. There is real. I I think it's what Shane and I were talking about in the episode we did with Pastor Mel. I think it's the greatest opportunity we've ever had. Yeah. Because there's a standard. It's almost like we used to have to. I used to have to take guys. You know, I'd load up my churches, I'd take them down to Mardi Gras, take them to Indy, to show them a tough street. It's right here now. Exactly. Mardi Gras and the craziness of everything that Amen. that man can want, you can get now in Marion. Uh, the marijuana store over here across the street has a line around it on Sundays, greater than most of our churches. Nobody mm-hmm. nobody would ever dream 
is mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the, what's, the, the loss of innocent mm-hmm. unborn life in this mm-hmm. state of Illinois is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. What's happening in our education mm-hmm. and what we're gonna, what, what's being educated to our children mm-hmm. starting at kindergarten about, about different, all these hybrid sexes and, and, mm-hmm. and even by second grade, they're talking to the kids in education curriculum about things like masturbation mm-hmm. and, and sexuality and, and hormone therapy by fifth grade. What we're seeing right in the middle of us is what we used to only see on a bourbon street. Mm-hmm. We're seeing it right here in our mm-hmm. own schools in Marion and Heron and Carterville. Our, our teachers are facing this. Our parents are facing this. We are almost, if we don't, we're going to have to dial up some of our NGL training and almost switch out some of our church training, which is nice, comfortable shore training. And we're going to have to retrain our people to do battle right here. It's almost like they're in the walls, Jim. Mm-hmm. They've got inside the walls. You know, you, you, you came out of Vietnam. Yeah. They've gotten inside the wire. And, you know, we've got, I don't know what you call that when they get inside the wire. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to look for the uh-huh. brothers and they've got an NGL hat on So <laughs> I'm not going to stab or shoot you. Yeah. But every other devil That's comes right. in here is fair game. Yeah. They're in the wires right now. They're in the mm-hmm. wires of our schools. They're in the wires mm-hmm. of our politicians. They're in the wires of our community. They're <clears> everywhere <throat> right now. And we can't just hate everybody. We got to know greater love, so you got to love everybody. Right. So we've got to be able to stand out there in the middle of that, just like Dave talked about in either session one or two about going in the indie that first time and being fearful what the the, the, the the guys were gonna do to them only to find a biker come over and say, I respect you, you yeah. guys back off. Mm-hmm. You know, we're gonna have to make some <clears throat> stands around here just so people might again see the glory of the Lord. That's right. My question is, will anybody stand? Right, yeah. Amen. I'm you know, really what, concerned. What, excuse me. That's what bothers me. I'm, I'm an ex coal miner. Okay. Now we never got rich, and, and I know there's some things that that wasn't good, but we always stood together. We stood for our families. We stood for who we were. You had to fight to get a, a raise. You had to fight for this. You had to fight for that, and uh, so we always had to stand up and. Uh, and I think, well, when's the next generation going to stand up? Mm-hmm. Uh, this here uh, new type of hiring they got, uh, where they go through, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of that, and where they put and give them a job up here and, and then say, okay, <clears throat> you can hold up for 60 days, 90 days, you got a full time job. They don't get that full time job, they, they, they rotate them right out the door. Right. right. Just use them as, as, as cattle. Over and over, <laughs> over, and over again. And, yeah. And yeah. It's happened, since my boy graduated out of high school, and it's, it's going on for all these years. It's never said on politicians. It's never said on the news. But uh, you go in there, and they'll set you up a job, but they take the money right off your, off your check, and, then, and there's, no, there's no backing. I said until you you know, Reagan said each generation has to choose freedom. Yeah. And so somebody has to do something. Yeah. One of the things I'm seeing, guys, I, I see in the, the generation, the younger generation in our church, in our room, I'm seeing these guys start Christian businesses and, and music and bands. I'm seeing some real, I see great worshipers in our younger group of people today. I, I've got some incredible people we're connected to in the community. They're doing great things. What I don't see is yet the ability to stand against the tide. to be Because mm-hmm. you say Joshua. I, I, th- I think Joshua is a good example, but I think a better example today right now is Daniel because Daniel, Daniel was in yeah. captivity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We are in a time uh-huh. where we're, we have a completely counter system around us, and we are Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. And I do see people that are worshiping in the midst of that, that they're, they're, they're beginning to make stands. I see a coalition. But, yeah, I don't see anybody being the Daniel yet. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't I, are, Not yet. Yeah, and I think that's going to have to come. I think we're losing freedom and we're losing that. And there's going to have to be a Popeye moment where I just can't take it and I can't stand it no more. And so my concern is, you know, how do we get there? So let me just ask this question. I think this is the most important question we'll do in this segment. If, if we were sitting here with some of this younger generation, and guess we're not done. So we've got, we've got our own stands to make. I'm going to stand as long as I can. And I think on the dock is a way to get information out there and give people tools. And we're wanting to give young leaders – they podcast. They listen. They Colt here, who's on the, on the the board today, and he he listen, He just told me his forty minute drive to work. He listens to podcasts every day. I know Lucas does. I know my daughter Megan does. I, I know they're all listening and they're learning and they're taking in information. I wanted on the dock to be information that would help lift them up and get them off the dock and into the game, not into a game just to lay on the sideline. I want them to get out there and make some plays. 
teams and move the ball back into hmm. our territory. So I think that's going to happen. I do. I feel it coming. I, I really do. So I guess what I want to do is if, if we're talking to those guys and there were two or three or four leadership takeaways to help them get the courage to make that stand this day, what would we get in their, what, what do we want to get in their saddlebags? What do we want to get in their, in their, in their course? How, how can we come together and have a little round table here and throw out three, four, five things, two, three things that we could give them to really dial in on? I'll, I'll just take it in any order. Whoever wants to go mm. first. Mm. Wow, that's a tough one. That's tough. We're, we're going to give a gift. We want to. We want to give them some of the experience, things that we will work. That will. What are those things that we know that will transcend time? That we know it's work. Work for me from the beginning to the end. I, I know for me. I know that you have to pay your dues. So let me start with that one. You have to pay your dues. There's just no way. So the young people, there are some young people that, want, that and a lot of them are paying their dues. They're working hard, doing many jobs and things. Praise God. But you're going to have to do that. And and it's not any one of those that will get you there. It's the combinations, the culmination of that experience that will open the next door and then the next door. I don't think all my doors have been opened either. So I'm still culminating. And as long as you stay in that mode that you're learning and you're going to walk with God and be obedient, faithful, available, and teachable, I think we're going to see this younger generation begin to really well up and build some momentum in them. And we're going to see some great things because they're going to, here's the one thing my wife reminds me regularly is that while you and I weren't raised where all this stuff is, we didn't have a phone that we could watch pornography on. You had to get somebody to get some book from some store that everybody knew was getting those stores and they were already boycotting those stores. Everybody has a pornography instrument on their phone right now. Exactly. You can get things that you never dreamt of. Mm-hmm. You can go. You, everybody has everything at a touch. I mean, so this generation has not just grown up with, we had it relatively easy, to be honest with you. I mean, our big battles were, were this and that, but they've got it. Their teachers mm. are brainwashing them. Right. Their society, their politicians are selling them out. This group is being forged under a different fire than we were. And I think when they do stand up, and they will stand up, and some are starting to stand up. I think they're going to be made of a of a level of metal that we never knew. We're going to be like iron, and they're going to yep. be titanium. So when they do stand, they're going to stand because they have been brewed in something a lot hotter than we were. The question is, what are those two or three things that would transcend that? And mine is pay your dues. Don't don't expect to be instantly famous or an influencer or whatever. Just get in, find somebody that's anointed in your ministry, find a Fred, find people that can coach you. And maybe you think they don't understand, but the core basics of sharing the gospel have not changed. Right. Right. Amen. So that that's mine. That would be my, is that you got to be ready to pay your dues first before you can get Popeye muscles. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you're doing your dailies and you're, you, you're being faithful, available and teachable, it's a race. You got to finish the race. Fred would always say, you know, some of you are so close to the starting gate, you can still hear the gun going off. Mm-hmm. That, and, and, and that's part of it. They want to get there right to the finish yeah. line, and, and you're not. You're yeah. still at the start, and you've got to go farther. And the apprentice journeyman and craftsman that we use, HAC, it means that you're going to you're gonna start with somebody else and just learn. You're going to watch. Then you're going to step in a little bit with some supervision, and then eventually you're going to lead. The problem is when you lead someplace, you're not done. You're probably just getting ready to go to the next level where yep. the AJC starts right back over. Yep. You know what I mean? It starts over. Cold over here is running the system today because three episodes ago, I mean, he was watching Lucas. He's running one. The thing about Colt knows is that on – a few weeks from now, Lucas is not going to be here. And so he will be a craftsman at that point in time. And the cycle doesn't end there. It, it, what's next for it? Yeah. You know? And I, I also don't want to see our society get too satisfied. Mm-hmm. I just arrived. So I guess I'm done. You know, your, your GPS says I'm here. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I don't stay places long. I mean, God's a tent dweller. So I think one is that I think that's very good D- doing your dailies that came out of every single leadership one I've done so far. You'll hear the one thing, every pastor one I've done, everything I did with the co- I had I had the, some of the top Christian coaches in here. Every one of them said, doing your dailies. Hmm. Doing your dailies. Doing your dailies. <laughs> yeah. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Amen. You cannot do anything else. In fact, like Coach Martin, you know, I had him in here and two or three other coaches, Roger, all that. Had the pastors in here, same thing, doing mm-hmm. your dailies. If you're not doing your dailies, you'll get your lunch eight. You won't be able to stay in contact in the relationship. Mm-hmm. What's, an, what's another one or two, guys? Those are great. You know, I think that a thing that uh, I've seen in the past, I still believe it's that way, the journeymen have got to be able to step aside and give an opportunity. 
to let someone step up and, and uh, move. And even in that, um, sometimes it's going to look different than what we were used to. But uh, to make that available uh, for the young people today, that they can go and, and, and have that opportunity to succeed and also fail. Uh, but uh, it's hard to let go. You know, it's hard. It's hard. I know for me in leadership, when I was here uh, in leadership, it's when you see a kid who's all of a sudden is 21 years old, you still recognize him as a kid. Right. And you, and then that's not, you know, I don't know if it's a human fault of, of us or what, but, um, but to see their potential. Don't you figure so many of those Pharisees and Sadducees looked down at Jesus because he was young? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, young punk. Bunch of, <laughs> bunch of young disciples. Nobody wanted them anyway. I mean, I, I, we never talk about that that kind of stuff. I, I tell you, one of the things that I've seen really done well here with it, one thing I think this young generation does tremendously well, we're, we're blessed here at Community Faith Church with, with, with two really good, effective leaders that really transfer ministry better than anybody I've seen at their age group in a long time. Uh, Lucas, who's our, our director for this, he, he runs all of our creative arts here development he has got an incredible level of depth here i mean his booth has got so many people are trained to cross train and it's like like while while this studio's new we've already been doing this stuff in the other room with our virtual campus so i mean he he, he basically brought colton here and and he's running the board after three but he, he already trained colton the other room you know and, and colt's one of the newer guys back there doing stuff like that but but i love the fact that he's been very reproductive at every level i mean lucas can be gone from here for two sundays and you don't know he's gone other than you don't see him at the keyboard you know and but his the ministry reflects him and i think that's what i'm talking about with fred <laughs> will the ministry reflect us when we're gone or we can't be here will there be people to step up and i've seen that with ben ben's been our worship leader has been wonderful at engaging other worship leaders in our church i mean he he shares the platform he'll jump back on drums you know we've got and so as a result of that gosh ben can't be here he, the month we're in right now he's not here this entire month and you know when he told me that i didn't panic you know why he has prepped so many people to lead it's just not a problem mm -hmm. yeah. and, and i think what we've got to do is get to doing some of that stuff again in the church we got to step aside while we're around and let people learn how to do this stuff. And that's what NGL did, I think, yeah. in all of us. That's that's what Fred did. I mean, if you remember, we had that huge camp, past Christian, and I know there were some issues. We, we could have just went and got a whole other big camp. It was great. It was all working. But instead, the decision was made by administration to break it up into smaller camps to give other men a chance to mm -hmm. lead, other men a chance to, to step out. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. A any others come to your mind, those top leadership things that you would share? Well, that's one thing about NGL. It's uh, it is to train leaders. It's all about it. It's all about men growing up to be leaders. It's all about men growing up to be a husband, to to be a father, uh, to pass it on to their sons, pass it on to their families. And one commitment me and Fred made one time. He says, "We'll stick together till the last drop falls." Amen. And I said, you got it, Fred. And, uh, you know, our commitment in, in No Greater Love uh, has never slowed down. It's changed in some ways, but it's never lost. It's not lost anything. It actually has brought more guys up. And they do it in uh, in the music. They do it in putting things together. They do it in growth. And, and, and you're one of the greatest examples that I know of. And watching you all these years, and well, I said, man, I said, who can keep up with Troy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, you know, you've been a real blessing. And Thank I, you, brother. I, I, I appreciate. Want, it. I want to tell you, man. Yeah. Uh, when you come to those meetings, we ain't seen you a long time. I said, oh my gosh, he's he's in Thailand, man. He's down there, no the rat hole, man. And he's <laughs> building churches right in, in in the worst places in the world, and yeah. and here's Sarge over there, and they're and Vietnam. The days coming together, they they'll touch each other and mm -hmm. uh, work through Cambodia. We'll meet each other. Amen, amen. <laughs> We're yeah. trying to get back to COVID has slowed us down. Yeah. Don't amen. you think the, the devil's been able to use COVID in some ways? It, but in some ways, COVID's also allowed the church to be sifted. It, it's filtered mm -hmm. out churches. It's yeah. told the real pastors are standing up, the real leaders are standing up. I do think what the devil meant to crush us will actually define us. Yeah. I think the devil's messed up with this. But I believe you're looking for the day of Daniel. I, I do. I think we're in, I think Joshua, I think there could be a Joshua day again. Yeah. And we've been, I think we had that shot. And I think we're now on the day of Daniel right now. Oh, 
And I, and I think what we've got to do now is we've got to convert Cyrus's king and leaders, mm. politicians, to see the Amen. hand of God Amen. and begin to respect the hand of God, yeah. just like we would do on the yeah. street yeah. with somebody that may not even normally would hate us. Yeah. But how many times have all of us been someplace where everybody wanted to kill us yeah. only to see somebody step up and yeah. say, leave those guys alone or let them talk? I remember the, one, of the, one of the biggest marches we had, we were going down through the middle of the quarter, and those people just block us up you know wouldn't let us go and then some dude will just step up in front and say let them through you know Amen. and you push up there and then i've seen times as i've shared before when they've stopped us in the middle of saint anne's in the darkest part of the quarter <laughs> oh, and then what do we do i think i think maybe you, i think this was jim murphy i'm going to quote jim now for the last episode if you can't do nothing just stand and we stick that cross up in the middle oh, of the man. darkest part of the That's quarter right. and i watched teen <laughs> challenge one year gather around that cross and begin to sing on christ the solid rock i stand mm. and i saw light hit that cross and go down and hit the ground and gay straight everybody in leather chaps with their yeah. booties hanging out yeah. <laughs> those of us with ngl hats trying to not see none of that stuff <laughs> we were all on the ground before the lord because everybody felt that burst of god's anointing there and i saw it was just an amazing moment because they made us stop in the most fearful place you could be at the time you know that was in the 90s and and what happened we stopped and lifted up the name of jesus christ right. and he stepped Amen. in Amen. I've seen that over again. So yeah. l- let me close. I'm going to close with this wrap up point. I, it looks to me like we're saying that people need to do your dailies. Yeah. You got to get a personal relationship with Christ. Okay. You got that's, to. Uh, that's getting up in the morning and seeking God, mm-hmm. having that daily devotion. Yeah. Every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Yeah. Don't even think about taking off. Yeah. I, I, I found the right place to park it so I can't get past it. So I, I just do it. Number two, <laughs> you got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. You got to get in. Right. Just get started. Get yeah. started. Get around people mm-hmm. that'll make you better. Yeah. So apprentice journeyman and craftsman. Be faithful, fat, faithful, available, and teachable. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know everything. You, yeah. you, you can't Google some things. You can't YouTube it. Sometimes you just got to get out into the deep and learn the feel of the ocean. Can I say one thing? Yeah, go ahead, brother. A while while ago, you guys were talking about them hats. I love that. Now, we earned through the police in New Orleans, one of the most toughest cities in the United States. I'm bringing the hat up so they can see it. They said the red hats, the favor Mm -hmm. that we— We had red hats for several years, said NGL. All them years, all the years we gained favor with, with the law down there. We didn't do it overnight. That probably t- I bet that took 15, 20 years before we ever get, got that kind of honor. And they, when they had that, there's Jerry wearing a red hat there on the screen okay, now. When they had that street blocked off, keep the trucks from coming in, blowing up people. Yeah, I remember. They that. actually moved some of them barricades for us when we carried across. Hmm. Ain't never done that. I We've gotten that. favor with you wouldn't believe it, That's leaders right. down there. That's right. Permits for things on Jackson mm-hmm. Square that you would never ever get, and you don't get those if you don't leave so, the yeah. dock. If you sit on the dock all the time, we want you to come watch this show. We want you to get filled up, but we want you to get you gotta off earn, it. you got to earn that hat, man. Yeah. You've absolutely got to earn it. You've got to, you got to do your dailies. you got to pay your dues. And then I think you have, you have to, I, I like what John says. you got to get out there. But you then when you get out there, you got to step aside and bring others along the process. That's right. you got to reproduce yourself. Like, like what, what I was telling you about Lucas and Ben and these guys here, we've got to reproduce ourselves. And, and guys, we're, we're, we're kind of getting a little, little gray here and stuff, <laughs> but we're not done yet i mean i'm not done in thailand i gotta figure out how to get back in there but i got look the pastors are using our zoom model from here we did virtual campus here all my pastors are locked down are now having zoom church in thailand if they can do zoom church in thailand we can reach into those places without actually getting there right now so there i mean there's all kinds of ideas that are happening what the devil meant for bad it may be just he's getting he's causing our pastors there to have to get more resourceful you know what I mean? And trust God. So pay your dues and journey. And then I, I think one thing we mentioned at the end, and we'll wrap with this. Cal Newport, right? I mean, Jim, Jim said in the previous episode that 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 the greater that the, the the greater the things that come against you, the greater the blessing. Yes. And I believe to test your stuff, you got to get off the dock, get out there, maybe do some shakedown cruises. You don't have to get too far away from the land. Get out and test your stuff. Do some stuff. Go on a trip with No Greater Love Ministries. Check those things out. We'll tell you a little bit more about how to find that. NoGreaterLove.org, you can find that out. But but you get out. The farther you get out, the more blessings you get. And Cal Newport says in his book, Deep Work, that we've lost the ability to do deep work because we don't ever give ourselves 
time to just do that undistracted. We need to get undistracted to devote some time to God, to, to do a mission in 2022 and start working now, getting ready for the next Mardi Gras, getting ready for the next place God's going to put you out. Do some study, show yourself to be faithful, available and teachable. And then here's the catch. He says, the problem today is we've got a bunch of people that have frenetic shallowness. All they've ever done is the shallows. So, so mm-hmm. it, they just don't even know how you do that. And so none of us here are special. All of us have just followed amazing leaders Mm -hmm. that went out themselves and showed us how to be obedient and submissive to the leadership of No Greater Love. And we all developed our cadre of experience by watching those guys lead us out and we came back alive. <laughs> and and then at the last day they said, You lead the men out, and we came back alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 now we're yeah. able to lead other men out. And so mm-hmm. you won't know till you step out. And here's where I want to say this: battleships. All of us, I think a lot of people dream of being a great battleship for God, being a great Daniel for God, being being a Joshua for God. All of us dream of that. The problem is battleships' guns can never fire in port hmm. because the power of the guns will knock down everything around them, and you can't fire them there. You cannot fire a battleship's guns in ports. Just the damage it will do is just unbelievable. The only way, way, way you can fire a battleship's guns is you have to unhook from the port and you have to launch out into the deep, then you can see what God's guns can do. You got to get out there to really fire them and see the impact that God can do. And when you do that, you'll forever be changed. Amen. You will be Amen. forever changed when you go off into some place <laughs> and you launch out and do that ministry. And and it's just amazing what God can do. You guys yeah. are amazing leaders, amazing things. I've learned so much from you. Jim, I'm going to close with this. Uh, Jim, one of the most valuable times in my ministry, I want to tell you this, I was looking forward to this, is... When Dave and Ron Chernica got the, 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 their tails whipped oh, by walking through that distance, yeah. it was a devastating time for a lot of people. And to be honest with you, I realized in most of my part, for most of NGO's career, we've been almost in, invulnerable. God's not really put a hand on us. You know, the, the Lord has been there. But these guys got beat to almost non-recognition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and how close were you to that when that all happened? Well, we, we made it back to the bus, and uh, we was told not to. You know, not get involved in anything. I said, man, that's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, that's the bike read you coming out. Yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> we're up there, and uh, and so I hear this. I hear this man screaming. I mean, death scream, guys. I mean, unbelievable. I seen the I seen the shadows. But I had those above ground tombstones. You know, the yep. tombs. Well, they're running this way, and he's screaming. He's screaming. He's screaming. And, and he's screaming for his life, and and they'd, they'd die down for a second, then they'd, they'd hit him again. You know, he's running in circles. Right. And they, nobody knows where it's because they turn all the lights but out. They, and everything. They, yeah, but they're using they're using a pistol. A yeah. Pistol whip. Whipping them. Hmm. So uh, <clears throat> I, I just grabbed four or five guys around there, and, and I said, "Hey guys, let's let's just pray that right now. This is somebody's dying down there, and, and I, we're not supposed to get involved, but we're going to pray." So we started praying, and a, and a girl grabbed me by the arm, and she says, they got one of your men down there. Mm-hmm. I said, how do you know? And she says, well, he's got a hat just like yours. That yeah. hat saved him. And so I said, yeah. And I said, uh, I said, let's go, guys. Well, it was me and Shane was was running. And it sounded like there's 100 men behind us. But there's only me and Shane. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I knew somebody busted a cap out of the crowd because they shot over top of us. They shot high to scare us because they didn't know if it was law or not. And so we come running in. And saying, here, here we are, me and Shane, and there's a countless amount of black guys. That's what, what it was, man. Was, what, what, it, for those of you who don't know, and what happened was we're down in the quarter. There's a section there where you can, to get back to our bus, you can walk around or you can cut through this project area back in the right, day. And when what happened was our guys took a shortcut. They right. could see the bus on the other side. And and these are top level, no greater love leaders. Ron Chernica, yeah. they're in the picture I showed you earlier. Uh, they're top level leaders. Ron Chernica, Dave Kane. I mean, these guys. Here, let me see if I can get them here. So if I if I get in this picture here, lower left there, Ron's in the back. Their family. They had walked through. They were seeing the bus and just you know, hey, there it is. It's time. We were like time to go home type yeah. thing. Right. And these guys cut through that thing, and the lights went out. It was a trap. They, they literally shut the light bulbs off, knock them out, and then they jumped them to get their camera and their stuff off them. And the process, pistol, D- Dave's a big guy in the bottom. He wasn't giving the camera too easy, right. so they proceeded to use a pistol to pry it from his hands. And those guys got, and that's, a, that's his father in law. Ron's his father in law. Yeah. 
and they got beat pretty good. And that's what, what we were hearing was something going on, not knowing it was our own guys. Then somebody says, hey, it is your guys. You, we see the hats. And so as you guys ran in, go ahead. They're oh, yeah, surrounded. Here, so here we are, me and Shane having a standoff. I said, uh, I said, look, guys, I said, I said, whoever he was, he come down through here. I said, he oh, he came through here to share about Jesus Christ. I said, I, I know I want him back now. So I want somebody, you know, say something. So many got still as a mouse. Well, Shane sees that hat over in the bush. I, and he went over and I thought, man, don't bend over. Don't bend over. And he bent over and he brought it up. It's all covered in blood. I said, OK. I said, I want to know where he's at. We stood there and it's still silent. I mean, it seemed like forever for anybody to speak up. Finally, somebody says, "Hey, the guy that was with him is dragging him to the hospital." Oh, yeah. So then we took off running to the right hospital. Back. Yeah, and the miracle was, Sharnka was beat so bad his eyeballs knocked plumb out of his head. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember and there that. Was one doctor that could put it back together, and he and he's not there all that. He was just, you know, partial time yeah. there. He was getting ready to leave. and then he This is in the middle of Mardi Gras. Nobody's in town where they're supposed to be at that yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, and so he was the man that put his eye Kept his sight. Yeah, yeah kept yeah. his sight. Yeah. I remember that night. I was We were in past Christian. We were staying in past Christian at that time. Yeah. So it was our, our night in, and it was our night in to come back yeah. in that year, yeah. I guess. It was our trip in. Yeah. And I was roomed across from Shernica. And I we remember we all stayed up until those guys came back that night. We Great. stayed in worship we, we until stayed, they came back. They walked in the door. They walked in the door, and then we had a few words. And then I remember we sang and went to bed. Yeah. And I was across when I when we got back to our room. I was bunked directly across from the door. And my memory point was of Shernica when he got in there beat. I mean beat fierce. And I thought, man, I'm a young leader at this time. I'm not even. I'm just just plebe at this point in time. And I'm looking over, and I'm seeing him on his knees before the Lord, thanking him <laughs> for the opportunity to be a witness. They were a witness in the hospital. They were able yeah. to do things, and they were able to live. And I looked over and saw that man on his knees for a long, mm. long time. And then, to top it off, did he come back next year? Yep. <laughs> sure he answered did. the bell. Didn't he, miss he the didn't bell. didn't have any hate in him? No, nope, no hate in him and went right back at it. And, and, you know, I was so disturbed by it. I sat on the bus on the, on the way back on the trip from the bus. I, I don't know if you know where I sat, Jim. I'll bawl my eyes out, man. Yeah. Bad, well, man. well, the entire trip back, I stood next to you in the aisle. And so that entire trip, I was disturbed. And you were upset. I was upset. And you spent a significant amount of time ministering to me on the way back. Wow. You, you don't even know, know how significant that was. I You had been in the mix, and I knew you were one of the toughest hombres I had ever met with <laughs> No Greater Love. You know, you're running the bike gangs and stuff. And I thought, man, if this guy's rattled, but yet you were holding, you were trusting the Lord, you were upset, but you, you knew God was going to make a way through it. And then somewhere in that process, you prayed and encouraged me. And I tell you what, that kept my head in the game. You know, I knew we'd been touched, but I also knew our God was greater. Amen. Guys, it's been a privilege to just talk with you guys. Amen. Hope this was a good experience. We'll Very get good. you back Amen. sometime soon. Great. And I hope if you're out there, pay your dues, do your dailies. <laughs> Be a journeyman. Get out there. Get off the dock and into the deep. And by the way, let me just tell you right now, we No Greater Love would love to have you. Get on their site, nogreaterlove.org. Find out more about their organization, how you can get out with one of these groups and get off the dock. We would love to have you on one of those trips. And it has been a pleasure to have you guys representing that legacy here. And I just want to tell everybody, you can find out more at onthedock.org, and you can get more info about what we're doing. If you want to find out how to get a part of this and you don't have any, the right information, just email us at info at onthedock.org. We'd love to have you. Please check us out on all our platforms, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and SermonNet. And please, if you've enjoyed this episode, I know I know you will. Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, Instagram. We'd love to have you. Find out, If you want to find out more information about how to do this, we'll get these guys linked up. Please share this message out with other people and subscribe, hit like, notify, all the different things you can do to get connected and get this message out. And thanks for being a part. We'd always love to have you as a Patreon partner or sponsor. Just check out our Patreon site at On The Dock with Pastor Tori, or you can find that by going to onthedock.org and we have links to all our platforms and our Patreon site there and by the way if you don't have a church home we'd love to have you at Community Faith Church if you're not going anywhere 10 o'clock on Sundays Wednesday 630 you can check us out on our virtual campus as well coftv.com we have a Facebook and a YouTube channel by those names so check it out we'd love to have you again guys it has been an honor to have you guys on the dock here around this table thank you a real pr 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 pleasure and a privilege guys and so thanks for joining us at On the Dock with Pastor Troy we'll see you soon we got a lot more great episodes coming up from you. Thank you for joining us for this incredible NGL Legends series.